Hey, welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to look at how a decorator pattern works in Ruby. My name is Caesar, and I've been using Ruby since 2008 to build all sorts of web applications, from simple MVP apps to full-blown multi-million dollar ones. In the beginning, I used to hate it because every time I would change something, I would break some other parts of the app. And every time I needed to add a new feature, guess what? I would need to change a lot of code and eventually break something. So I got really frustrated about it and started to look into how to solve both of these problems. And I eventually discovered that the solution to problem number one, i.e. not breaking stuff every time you change code, is to test it really well using strong automated testing practices. But that's not as easy as it may sound. It took me years to fully master this process. By the way, if you're interested in learning how to do that and not spend years discovering it all by yourself through trial and error, you can check out my book, Bulletproof Ruby on Rails Applications, which I've linked in the description below. Now, going back to problem number two, i.e. extending your app with new features without changing too much code, is to design it really well. And that's where today's pattern comes in. The decorator pattern allows you to attach new behavior to individual objects dynamically without affecting their classes or other objects of the same class. It's similar to the adapter pattern which I've talked about in a separate video that I'm going to link in the description, but the difference is that the adapter pattern changes the interface of the object it wraps, while the decorator does not. And because the interface remains unchanged, you can stack multiple decorators together to change behavior at runtime. You might think you could achieve the same result using inheritance instead. But the problem with inheritance is that you have less flexibility and a lot more complexity. You need to create a class for every possible combination you may use, and that gets very messy very quickly. But let's look at an example of a decorator. In this first example, we're using the shirt object and the coat object to decorate the person object. Each decorator object can either wrap the original object or an already decorated one and change the behavior of the feeling at method. You could also wrap the object with the same decorator multiple times. It doesn't make much sense to do that in this particular example, but you could if you wanted to. One problem with this implementation is, if the original object has other methods as well, we need to delegate all those other methods we don't care about to the wrapped object in order to comply with the transparent interface requirement in the Gang of Four book. And another problem is that the decorator object's class is not the original one, i.e. the person class. It's the decorator's class. In this case, it's the code class. So let's look at a different approach. The only problem with this approach is we can't extend an object more than once with the same module. So we can't have a double cheese pizza, for example. If we were to use the previous approach with the plain old Ruby objects, we could wrap the pizza object in the cheese decorator twice to get the double cheese pizza. But with the modules approach, Ruby won't allow that. But otherwise, if you don't need that feature, the modules approach gives you the correct class name back, and it also looks pretty clean. Okay, so we looked at how to decorate an object using both plain old Ruby objects and modules. But what else can we do? Well. We could use method missing in combination with the plain old Ruby objects to get past that inconvenience where the interface was not transparent. Meaning if you had more methods on the original object, you needed to somehow forward those methods from the decorated object to the wrapped one. There are two downsides to this approach. First, using method missing is slow. And second, the class of the decorated object is the decorator class, namely milk instead of coffee. Lastly, there is the option of using simple delegator instead of method missing to achieve the same result. If I were to sort these approaches by personal preference, I'd pick this one second, after the modules version. It's got almost everything right. You get to stack how many decorators you want, you can stack the same decorator multiple times, you also get the original class name back. It's got a lot of good things going for it, but there's just one thing I'm not necessarily a fan of and that's the redefining the class method. I'm not 100% sure that's a good idea. So there you have it. That is the decorator pattern in Ruby. What I really like about this decorator pattern is it allows you to create multiple single responsibility decorators that you can plug and play as you see fit. If you enjoyed this video, you can also have a look at other Ruby design patterns in my design patterns playlist, which I've also linked in the description. I hope that helped you understand the decorator pattern and how it works in Ruby. Bye.